Hey folks, John with Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in the computer business. So today we have another contender for the 50 caliber pepper ball challenge. And you know, somebody had asked me before um, why we do so much of the Humorex products. And well, that's because number one, Humorex puts out a good product. There's no question of it. But number two, a lot of the other ones are really expensive and kind of on the frill side, kind of like the, the, uh, uh, the salt supply which it's an awesome gun, but it's not something you carry around every day. This one, however, might just be. Let's see what we got. Here we go. So I got an email from a company called Lancer Tactical. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a, a link to their website down here below. Um, they are primarily airsoft, strangely enough but they do have two 50 caliber self-defense guns. And this is the Lancer Defense 50 caliber Scorpion. And I wanna give Stumpy a good look at that. Now guys, you know how I feel about packaging, right? And, and it, I cannot, okay, it's like the HTP 50. You guys have seen that. If you missed that video, I'll go ahead and toss a link up here in the description. But the packaging was kinda like this, cardboard box, bubble pack, and it still turned out to be a fantastic weapon. Well, same thing with this. This is one of those you'd see hanging on a rack over at Walmart, but the gun is heavy. It does feel like it is all steel, and it has got a lot of weight to it. So let's crack this thing open and see what we actually have in here. By the way, a lot of you might have noticed that Stumpy got a rise here, or a raise, a, a lift. Uh, yeah, he's going up in the world. I wanted something so I could get a little more down shot on these things, guys. So, all right, I'm cracking this open. And uh, gun's gonna come out first, apparently. Oh, wow, guys, that does have some nice weight to it. Now, the one thing I wanna tell you, you can see the size of that. This is about the same size as the TPM-1. You guys have seen that on the channel a thousand times. Um, wow, that does, it's got a lot of weight, but all the weight seems to be up here is where all the weight is. Down here, it's pretty light. Now, given that this is where the magazine is, and we'll go into that in just a second, and this is where your CO2 cartridge goes in. Once you've got that loaded up, it is going to add some weight to it. So let's see what else we get in the box here. Oh, oh, guys, we get a very detailed teardown. That's kind of cool. Um, you know, on the TPM-1, the Walther, uh, the Smith & Wesson m and a lot of these are very difficult to tear down. Um, and this doesn't look a whole lot easier to tear down, but at least you have instructions here. And it looks like it is just a one sheet on how to load it. Yep, now to put the cartridge in. Incidentally, guys, notice that cartridge is going in nozzle down because you've got that impact butt cap there to strike to puncture the cylinder. All right, other than that, it's a pretty standard load up. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's go ahead. We'll get this loaded up, and uh, we'll see what it actually looks like when it's loaded and how it feels. Here we go. All right, guys, so one thing about this that I do like, and you've heard me complain about the burner about that. By the way, you guys, I don't know if you noticed, but I actually alternate my sidearm. This is the burner that I'm wearing now, but generally you'll see me wear the TPM-1, and occasionally I'll actually wear the wall through. I kind of like the feel and the way that one fires too. Um, but this is a very good size, and it's a standard size for any holster. In fact, it would probably fit in this one without a problem. So, all right, let's drop that magazine. As you can see, it is a drop free. There we go. And we are going to be firing today, guys, the 50 caliber riot balls. You guys have seen these a thousand times. They are rubber with a steel core. And I'll give Stumpy a look at that. So they're very, very hard and they have really good penetration on pretty much every surface we've tested it against. All right, so looks like we pull down this lever. There we go. And we load the balls in from the top. And look, you do actually push it through. There's a little pressure there, guys, so that's kind of cool. And you can see there's a little spring. Watch when I push it down, it'll spring. See? All right, that holds those in place. All right, so that is, see here, that's five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so it holds eight rounds just like every other of the uh, um, Humorex products, eight rounds, which is pretty cool. All right, so we're going to slide that up in there. And now we're going to unscrew the cap here. And we're gonna put in our CO2 cartridge. Now, just like last time, it's a standard 12 gram CO2 cartridge, which once again, I do like over the burner, which uses the 10 gram. 
Yes, I know you can get the adapters, and yes, I know there is now the HD Max that has the extended already built into it. But the stock or the, the, the 10 grams, they're not that hard to find, but yeah. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put a drop of Pell Gun Oil right on the tip. There we go. And we're going to put this in, nozzle down, and we're going to screw this on. All right, at this point, guys, once we get this all screwed down, there we go. This is now ready to fire. Now, I got to tell you one thing I do like about this one. On the HTP 50 and on the uh, uh, Quick Pierce magazines that you can get for the entire Humorex line, um, this can get screwed down so tightly that what happens is you have to use an Allen key. There's an Allen wrench hole in the back of it to actually unscrew it. This one's got a lock, so when you hit to a certain point, it doesn't go any further. That's kind of cool. I do kind of dig that. All right, so at this point, this is ready, guys. I am not seeing any blowback action. So if that's important to you, once again, this is like the HTP 50. If that's important to you, this may not be the one for you. I do see a hammer that does move. See the hammer? And it does move. That is a very long trigger pull, guys. Remember, until we charge this, there's no pressure there. All right? You got fire and safety, and that's all you've got on this weapon. So, did everybody just see that? Did everybody just see that? All right. So, when I was playing with the trigger, even though we are not charged, it discharged around. Let's try that again. Remember, there's no... <laughs> guys, you're seeing it with me, guys. You're seeing it with me. So, we're going to go ahead and reload those rounds hang on a minute holy cow uh and hope that that was just a fluke <laughs> we really hope that's a fluke guys i'm not gonna lie i know nothing about this company nor do i know anything about this gun so let's hope that was a fluke and that these are actually held in place a little better than that and you can look up in here guys hopefully you can see um, there's no round in there currently. I don't know if Stumpy's going to be able to pick that up or not with the light we got in here, guys. But there's no round in there currently. So let's go ahead and push this back up. Okay, so it's not releasing the round until you pull the trigger. So there is at least that. All right. So we're going to cut him a break for just a second. Apparently, the trigger must release a little lever, which drops around in to fire. Um, we're going to let it go. We're going to try it. All right, guys. So as usual... We're going to move out here into our range. We're going to fire down the hall. Um, I do have a Scully for us to shoot at. And we're going to see what this thing will actually do. I don't have any inert 50 caliber rounds today, guys, for the powder. But we've all seen what the paintball, or the, excuse me, the pepper balls will actually do when they hit. So we're not going to worry about that. Right now, I just want to see what kind of power it's got. Uh, and I'm going to set up the chrono. So we'll see what she does. Be right back with you. All right, guys. So here's what we've got. As you can see, we're set up on our regular range down here. We're going to be shooting down there. One of the questions I occasionally get, now you guys know I don't buy movie magic, I just won't do it, is if I reprint a Scully after every time we shoot it. And to answer that question, yes I do. Because I want a brand new, super hard, fresh Scully so that we can see exactly what this is going to do to it. So, we're going to set Scully up down here, as usual. And we're going to see what this actually can do to it. Um... Like I said, guys, we're going to just assume that the ball falling out the first time was because there's a release in there for the trigger. We're going to try this. Let's see what it does. We're, we're not going to pass judgment quite yet. All right, so with the weapon on safety, by the way, guys, all of this is cosmetic. Um, the catch, the slide, none of that actually works. The hammer does work, and it can be used in either single or double action. So right now we're in safe. Let's go ahead and puncture this. Okay, I heard it. It's like a... And I don't hear any leaks. That's a good sign. All right, so we're going to try to fire it through the chrono here and hit Stumpy. Uh, this is a very tough shot, guys, because I am literally behind the camera shooting through a gap about that big in order to hit this and hit Stumpy. So bear with me. We're going to try. All right, here we go. First shot. Everybody watch. Let's see what we get. It has got a very long trigger pull. All right, trying to re-aim. 240, 240, 
and out. All right, so we're in that 230 to 250 range on average with a brand new cartridge. That's not bad. Now, let's see what kind of damage we got. I believe that's the same area we are on the HDP 50 as well. So let's take a look here. Whoa. Man, my sh <laughs> I think my targeting is a little off here, guys. You know that I, uh, I've been shooting for a long time, so when I aim, I typically hit what I'm aiming at. Granted and no excuses made, I was firing at a weird angle through a tiny gap, but still, this is pretty bad shooting. So right down here, skimmed a hit, skimmed and hit, broke the cheekbone, which is pretty cool. And over here, skimmed and hit, and then through the side, you can see the nose actually went into the nose, guys. Look at that. Into the nose and hit that. So you know what? That is simply not acceptable. I don't, I refuse to accept those results. I'm going to turn Scully sideways. Let's put him back down here and see if I can get some actual better shots this time. Here we go. All right, guys. So here we go. As you can see, I've got Scully up on the top there. Uh, he's mounted sideways. So we'll actually be able to see if we're actually getting any good shots. Guys, I am going to stay back behind the camera here because you know I don't like movie magic. I want you to see it as I see it. Let me zoom you in so you can actually see the impacts because I know from way back here it's a little tough to see it. All right, that's about as far as she's going to zoom right there. So hopefully that'll give you an idea. Well, guys, I think we killed Scully. Look at him hiding on the floor. Oh, no, 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 no. He doesn't get away. Be right back. Hang on. So I don't believe, I, like I said, I know movie magic. I want to see this together. Um, oh, wow. Okay, hold on. Before I say anything, I want to get the last, I think there should be three rounds left. So let's fire these last three rounds. Tell you what, I'll do these at closer range. So hold on. I'm going to step up here. This is our three to five meters. Remember, we talked about that. Here we go. And I'm going to seriously dent him up good here. Yeah, because we can. <laughs> All right, guys. Let me zoom this out a little bit, and we will pick up Scully and see what is left of poor Scully. So that last shot, guys, by the way, uh, <clears throat> he had rolled kind of forward. I was about 10 feet away right into the dome. So let me see what kind of penetration we got on this thing. All right, so y'all, you guys will remember when we shot the front, right? We got the skitters, you know, bad shots, yada, yada, yada. Once I realized where this thing dialed in, and by the way, there are uh, mildly, and I do mean mildly, adjustable sights. You can do a little bit of up and down, and that's about it on this thing. But once I figured that out, look how deeply those rounds are embedded in Scully. That is crazy, guys. Uh... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's all eight rounds right there. And as you can see, those are, if you're looking at the top of the skull right here, you can see how those are in. Those go all the way to about there, embedded in there. So overall, a pretty decent weapon. Now, there is one other thing that I really, really like about this. To release pressure, if you're going to change the CO2 cartridge, I really like this, guys. This has got a little valve on it. You can see it's like a little bit of pressure. Now watch. You can release pressure without having to constantly dry fire the weapon. And then once the pressure is released, you simply unscrew this. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I really like that function. That's super cool. I kind of wish that the HTP 50 had it, but of course they don't. So, all right, let me... Uh, let me move back into the studio here, and uh, I'll give you some final thoughts on a couple other things that I found out about this that <laughs> it's not bad. Here we go. Guys, let's talk about the Lancer Scorpion from Lancer Tactical. Um, all right. Obviously, this is not a Berna, okay? This is not a TPM-1. This is not a Smith & Wesson m &P. This is not a Walther. This is not even an HTP-50. But you know what this is? This is a decent self-defense gun for under a hundred bucks, dude. When I bought this thing, it was sixty-eight dollars on sale. And um, honestly, for something you're going to leave sitting on your nightstand or something like that, it's wonderful. I mean, I, I actually got the penetration. You guys saw the velocities we were getting. 
We were right in that mid 200 range, which is pretty much average for this type of weapon. And it didn't fail. It just fired normally. Um, I okay, they say that the slide action on these things, like when you're dealing with the, uh, the TPM-1 or anything else, the slide action takes some of the power from the CO2. So if you don't have that slide action, all of the power of the cartridge is going out the front here. I'm inclined to believe that to some extent. Um, I do like the hammer, though, because this does give you the option to either fire it double or if you want to, to cock it back, you can fire it single action as well. Now, the ball's falling out. I found out what that was all about. So apparently, this has got a very small clip right here. And I want to show this to Stumpy here. There's a very small clip right here. That little clip is what releases the balls into the chamber. So when you load this in, it pushes one up into the chamber. The trigger's got a catch that holds the ball in place. So it's not going to roll out if you've got this thing um, charged and in your holster. But if you're not charged and you pull the trigger, it will allow one of the balls to roll out and it will pop the next one up there. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, that being said, over the HTP 50, I do like this loading method. I do like the fact that you've got this um, to actually load a magazine in, which is cool instead of having to load it from the bottom, which means you could carry a couple of spare mags pretty easy. And I definitely like the way they designed this pressure release and this uh, uh, strike cap here. Because number one, you're never gonna over tighten it to where you can't do your hands. And number two, you can release pressure with that tiny valve. That is wonderful. I kind of, uh, part of me is wondering if that would fit on the HTP 50 and don't think I'm not gonna try it later. I'll let you know. But overall guys, for the value, a sub hundred dollars, 50 caliber. You saw that it fired the rubber riot balls without a problem. We had no misfires at all. And you saw the impact on Scully. And once I got the dialed in for the sights, you saw that I was able to actually pull that in and rein it in at 25 feet. So it's pretty darn solid. And then, of course, you saw what it really did once we were up into the range that three to five meters. So not bad at all, right? Pretty cool. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more of different companies uh, when it comes to the pepper ball guns. There are a lot of them out there now. There's a lot of them, guys, that I may or may not kind of skim over. Uh, like, for instance, since we already have the salt supply, there's no reason to go to the Tipman TPX, and there's actually a, another version of that, too. I can't remember right offhand. But they're identical guns. They do the exact same thing. Um, there are, however, and Berna has just released a brutal... Uh, it, it almost looks like a, 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 a tactical rifle, and I can't wait to actually get a hold of one of those, but it's like 800 bucks. So, yeah, we'll see how that works. Guys, by the way, I don't know if you noticed we did uh, launch the Super Chats down there. If any of you guys want to hit one of those Super Chats, any th comments you put will be pinned up on top. It helps the channel. Anytime th that happens, then it goes right back into the channel. We can get more toys to show you guys, more reviews to do. Um, the next video we do, uh, aside from obviously tomorrow night, which is the podcast and such, is going to be a, 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 an, an ammo challenge. We're going to try a couple different kinds of 43 caliber ammo to see which ones hit the hardest, which ones, uh, uh, you know, what kind of spread you're getting on the pepper, um, all that kind of stuff. Because I, I, that's been a real question. What people want to know, if I've got the 43 or I've got a 50, what ammo should I be running? So that's going to be the video that's coming up next. Have a great week, guys. Uh, don't miss the podcast. Don't miss the gameplay. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.